Hi folks, welcome to lesson seven, Health and Infection with Priests and Science. Our last lesson, we were looking at how antibiotic resistant bacteria arise, and I left you with some practice questions, the answers to which are here. So now would be a good chance to pause the video and check your answers from yesterday's questions. Uh, question six is here, and then we can move on to today's lesson. Uh, same format as normal, but again, if you want to pause the video and go and get your bits and pieces, now's a good chance to do that. Um, but if not, let's get on with some retrieval practice. Uh, your first retrieval practice questions are here, so pause and retrieve. And the answers to those questions are here, so pause and revise. The second set of questions, P1 energy. Pause and retrieve. And the answers to those questions are here. So you can pause the video and revise. And the last set of questions are B1 health and infection. So pause and retrieve. And the final set of answers are here. So pause and revise. So today we're gonna to look at the process of drug discovery. So essentially uh, how we find and produce new drugs when we need to treat new diseases. And you're gonna need a few different documents as normal. These are on show my homework, but if not, you can copy either straight from the screen or straight from when I go under the camera. Uh, so this is the first document. This is the second document. And this will be the practice questions we will use at the end of this lesson. So I'm going to switch now across to the camera. Okay, so here we have our questions uh, for today. Um, you can see the first question says, traditionally, where did our drugs, in the drugs they mean medicines, where do our medicines or drugs come from? Now traditionally, originally, they were extracted from plants and also microorganisms. Now the word extracted means purified, uh, extracted from um, plants and microorganisms. So plants and microorganisms have made chemicals naturally um, and that's really so they can fight off their own infections. And what we've done is found ways to remove them from plants and microorganisms and use them for ourselves. I've got three examples in this table. We have what's called digitalis, uh, which is a very common drug which is used for the treatment of certain heart conditions. Now, digitalis originally came from the foxglove. And that's obviously the plant. Uh, the second uh, drug we have on our list is aspirin, which I'm sure everybody has heard of. And aspirin is uh, it's used to treat pain. So it's a form of painkiller, uh, but it's also used to treat inflammation. Uh, inflammation is where we get redness and swelling. And aspirin has come from the willow tree. And finally, penicillin. Again, I'm sure everyone's heard of penicillin. Um, is used to treat bacterial infections. which we dealt with in the last lesson. And lots of you in the know will know that it was originally purified from a fungus. So those are three common drugs. And you can see that they come from uh, plants and microorganisms there. Now, underneath that question says, uh, give three things that new drugs are tested for before they are given to patients. So this is the process of well, what, what do we do with these drugs? Um, what is the process for doing it? And we test them for three things, maybe in order of importance, actually. Uh, the first one is what we call toxicity. 
I know toxicity is essentially what side effects does the drug have? And it's also tested for efficacy, which I'm sure is a word you probably don't use very often, efficacy. And that's essentially how well they cure a disease, how well they cure a disease, or how well they relieve the symptoms of a disease. So that's efficacy. And the last thing we test for is dose. Essentially there we mean how much and how often should the drug Be given so that's what we call dosage how much and how often should the drug be given okay so that's our first document today we now move to our second document which looks uh, like this and what we're doing here is we're breaking down the process of drug discovery or drug testing into these six different stages so I've got six different stages down here and you can see what they're called on the left hand side now across the top we have three columns one says on and what is what is it tested on what is the aim of this stage and the last box of the object says additional information so additional information that we need to know now preclinical testing but preclinical means we're testing before it gets to humans so preclinical testing happens on human cells or tissues. So we're using human cells or tissues. We're not using a, a whole organism, just a, like a Petri dish of cells or Petri dish of tissue. Now the aim is finding potential drugs for further testing finding potential drugs for further testing and essentially we would screen i don't know tens or hundreds of different drugs to see what looks the most promising before we take it forward into the next stage now the most promising ones then go to preclinical testing too and that's where the drugs are tested on animals. And they will be the animal model which provides the closest representation to the, the human disease. They try and get as close as possible. And in this phase, they're testing for three things. Uh, we're testing for uh, small bullet points, toxicity, which we dealt with, side effects efficacy how well the drug works and dosage now essentially you want to know roughly about those three things before we move into human beings so you want to know roughly what sort of side effects are we looking for um, and what sort of dose should we start with obviously important before you put it into a human being now clinical trial phase one is actually on healthy volunteers. So these are human beings, we moved into humans now, but they're volunteers and they're healthy. They do not have the disease. They're usually small numbers as well. They don't usually, usually do large groups in, in this phase. And the only aim of this phase is checking for side effects said safety is the key priority number one and the way they go about that and i've got a little bit of additional information in this box is they start at very low doses and 
slowly increase. And during that process, they'll document what sort of side effects different patients have. Now, providing it's safe to move on, they will move to clinical trial phase two, and this is on patients with, with a disease. We imagine we are looking at controlling pain. So you might be taking a group of patients which have severe pain, and you're trying to find a new painkiller for them. Now, this phase, phase two, where they only use small numbers of people. And the key aim, they're only looking for one thing here, and they're going to find the dose that is most effective but with least side effects. So the dose that is most effective but with least side effects. So they find that dose and that's the dose they then move into phase three with. And here we are again with patients with the disease. Again, we could think of uh, treat, the treatment of pain. And what they want to do here is compare efficacy or compare the efficacy of the drug. So what they really want to do is compare the dr their new drug against whatever is the gold standard. So if we've got a new painkiller, how good is it compared to aspirin or paracetamol or whatever, whatever people are using? And the way they do that is they take two large groups, I'll write small here, two large groups and half given new drug and half given a placebo. So two large groups, Let's imagine a, a hundred in one group and a hundred in another group. A hundred of them are given uh, the new drug and a hundred are given the uh, placebo. Now, if you don't know what a placebo is, make a little note somewhere on this piece of paper. A placebo is just a fake drug. It's like a sugar pill. So you've got half given the new drug or half given uh, the, the placebo there. And the other thing to note is the, the trial, this trial is what we call double blind. Now, double blind means that the patients don't know whether they're getting the new drug or the placebo, and neither do the doctors know who's getting the new drug or the placebo. And the reason they do that is they don't want the patients to have a bias, oh, I'm getting the drug, so I feel better. And they don't want the doctors either to present a bias in it. So I'm just gonna make a note underneath here, a little asterisk here, a little star, and down here I'm gonna write double blind, Uh, patients and doctors don't know who's getting which drug and that is I'll put it here to avoid bias. Now what happens after all of that is that the whoever's conducting the trial will have a load of data, a load of results, which will require publishing, but before they can be published, before they can be put in a journal and put out there on the internet or so for everyone to see, 
they get what's called peer reviewed by other scientists. So they're sent to other scientists, like people top in their field, and they, they say, this is what we've done. Uh, these are our results. Have a look at them for us. Um, and, and it's a way of checking the credit, uh, or, the, or credible, um, to see if the results are credible. So uh, over here, I'm going to write down the aim of this. And this is to reduce false claims before results are published. Okay, so that is the entire process of drug discovery from start to finish. It's a long process. It can sometimes take several years to get a drug all the way through it. But it's important that the process is right, as you can imagine, because safety uh, is absolutely paramount here. So that's the end of the lesson. Uh, as normal, the, um, the process I want you to do is here next. So you can spend a little bit of time embedding the new knowledge we've been through. That's the questions and the table. And then once you are competent, then you can move to the practice questions, either that are printed from Show My Homework or just uh, rewind the video a little bit to see those questions on the screen. So that's it for today, and I will see you tomorrow.